Here are my five college football picks against the spread for week three. Now, I hit over 70% last season in college football, but through two weeks, we're only five and five. Thanks to Cam Rising's finger injury and Texas Tech's entire roster catching an injury bug and stalling out what looked to be the easiest over point total of the entire season, maybe. But no excuses, though. We will beat that percentage. We're going to lock in and get way above 500. First up, UCLA plus three at home against Indiana. The Hoosiers have a hell of a coach in Kurt Singetti, and they laid the wood on Western Illinois last week, 77 to three. But here's the deal though. Signetti probably only has this job because Indiana absolutely fell off a cliff in road games the last three years under Tom Allen. And they were two and four since 2021 when not in Bloomington. And this trip to LA is going to be a serious test for the Hoosiers. Now on the UCLA side, their head coach Deshaun Foster, he needs to make a good impression in his first home game after eking out a game at Hawaii two weeks ago but that's still two weeks of prep time that makes me believe that the issues with the running game and ethan garber's chemistry with his teammates have been addressed but garbers he can't be afraid to use his legs early and often to extend ucla drives because the less indiana has the ball the better next game up i'm taking colorado state plus seven and a half at home against Colorado. This game was contentious last year between the coaches and the players, but the Rams brought it on the field despite being heavy underdogs. I like that Colorado still has their quarterback, Braden Fowler Nicolosi, and wide receiver Torrey Horton. They hooked up for 16 receptions in last year's game, and with Shiloh Sanders out with a broken arm, it's gonna be even harder to stop that connection. The thing that has me believing that the Rams can keep this game close is despite that being an air raid offense, they're not afraid to hand the ball off. They even used the Texas game where they were blown out 52 to nothing to try and establish the run, giving running back Justin Marshall 25 carries. Now, I think that that's smart. In a game where you know you're gonna get worked, you're practicing something that's gonna help you down the road. Now, where this is gonna be really interesting though, is that Colorado State doesn't have a solid pass rush. And that could mean Colorado's offense finally has the opportunity to show what Shadur can do without constant pressure in his face. Or we're gonna find out that Colorado is the offensive line that you can get healthy and get your stats up against. Mm, that wouldn't be good. Next game up. I like Boston College plus 16 and a half on the road at Missouri. Boston College quarterback Thomas Castellanos is the ultimate drive extender. He's cut down on turnovers so far in Bill O'Brien's scheme, and his ability to pick up yards as a runner means that Boston College won't be forced to run that defense out against Brady Cook more than they have to. Now, on the other side, Missouri's defense just hasn't been tested by anybody at all. They have looked great against inferior competition in Murray State and Buffalo. They limited both teams to 14 combined first downs. But is that a reflection of a defense that hasn't lost a step despite LSU hiring away last year's defensive coordinator? Or is it a reflection of the competition that they've played? Now, I'm aware that Missouri has handled business against good teams going back to last year. And I'm not saying that they're gonna lose this game, but they haven't had to face a mobile quarterback since facing Jaden Daniels in LSU last season. And Jaden had 130 yards on the ground in that game. Give me the Eagles to cover. Fourth up, I have Oregon finally covering this spread. This is 16 and a half points against Oregon State in Corvallis. Now, this pick might be confusing to some. You're saying to yourself, George, you're 500 in part because you thought Oregon would cover against Boise State. Look, I know what this Oregon team is capable of. They won this game last year by 24 points, and Jonathan Smith is gone. Plus, the offense has moved the ball extremely well, and the pass rush has been getting home. Now, all the ingredients are there for a blowout win. Oregon's offensive line is getting back healthy, and they just have to avoid the drive-killing losses on third down, tackles in the backfield, because their offensive line has not been playing 
to their capability. And then on defense, they got to pin their ears back and then attack an offense that is going to be forced to pass only. I believe that Oregon's issues are correctable. And if I lose this one, it's going to be because Giovanni McCoy finds a way to avoid the pass rush and make plays off schedule because he can do that. I've seen him working out with Sam Fisher for years, the quarterback coach. But I also remember him struggling against Washington State in 2022 and Cal in 23 when he was at Idaho. This is going to be his toughest competition that he's ever faced so far. And my lock of the week is LSU minus seven at South Carolina. And yes, I saw, I know what South Carolina did last week against Kentucky. Yes, I know LSU spent an entire half confused by Nickel State, but you can't just look at box scores and translate that to the next week because South Carolina's offense is not good. In fact, it looks like it stinks right now. And East Carolina's defense had an easier time with Old Dominion than the Gamecocks did. Raheem Sanders is getting less than four yards a carry and Lenoris Sellers at quarterback, he moves well in the pocket and he's keeping his eyes downfield, but he also puts the ball at risk and on the ground, trying to stick with plays and extend them. And that's a recipe for disaster against a team as athletic as LSU. But what about Dylan Stewart? The five-star pass rusher that is out there looking like Simeon Rice, because kid looks amazing. Well, Emory Jones Jr. and Will Campbell, possibly the first tackle off the board in the 2025 NFL Draft, aren't exactly the type of tackles that you're going to be able to bully. Now, I don't think that they're going to shut Stewart down completely, but he ain't going to take this game over and just wreck this game. And like every single week, I'm giving you one game that you need to avoid and stay the hell away from. And that game is Texas A&M minus four and a half at Florida. I know Billy Napier is only eight and seven at the Swamp, so it might be tempting to drop a bag on the Aggies, but this is a Texas A&M team that has lost its last 10 true road games. What's worse, eight and seven or 0 oh and 10? A finger math time. <laughs> you can't trust either one of these teams in this situation. And while 2024 five-star DJ Lagway looked good against Sanford, and 2022 five-star Connor Wiegman looked good against McNeese State, neither one of those results can be translated to the challenge that both teams are about to face. Too many unknowns in this game. Stay far away.